Good evening, folks. This is Bill Breeden. Welcome to Constellation Tour number 74. Tonight we're going to talk about an obscure southern constellation, Columba or Noah's Dove, or sometimes just Columba the Dove. And this one is in the region of Argo Navis or the Great Ship. So it is among the constellations that make up that great ship. And those constellations are Carina the Keel, Puppus the Stern, and Vela the Sail. Um, Columba depicts a dove. And since it's in the southern celestial hemisphere, we had to go a little bit further south. So we are observing tonight from Mexico City with a true field of view of 60 degrees, simulating a um, naked eye view of the sky from a light polluted, somewhat light polluted location. We have Stellarium here set up for March the 4th, 2021 at about 8.46 p.m. Columba is best viewed between January and March each year. It's not a very bright constellation and it's not very large, so it's a little obscure. So let's 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 see one way that you can find it. First of all, you have to be far enough south. So even I don't it may be visible from Miami from those latitudes, but to make it easier to see, I've gone even farther south to Mexico City. So I'm going to start by looking south and we're going to look for since it's march we're going to look for orion and here's orion's belt here and it points to the left to sirius the brightest star in the night sky in canis major and if you look just below sirius for another very bright star you will come to the second brightest star in the night sky um canopus or Alpha Carina. And Canopus is, is not visible from northern latitudes unless you're pretty fur. Some, some southern areas of the northern hemisphere you can get to it. From St. Louis, I've never seen Canopus. Um, but if you're far enough south, you want to drop down from Sirius down to Canopus. And look at the region just between the two, right about here. And look just over to the right, and you'll see a pair of stars right here. This is the region of Columba, or Noah's Dove, right here. So let's take a look at the constellation lines. And you can see those two stars are depicted right here. And this whole area here is Columba. And as I said, it's sort of um, in the region of the great ship Argo Navis. Here's Puppus the Stern. Here's Carina the Keel, most of it below the horizon, even from Mexico City. And here's Vela the Sail. So the ship is sideways with the stern sticking up above the horizon. And you have Noah's Dove here is just outside the stern of the, sh of the great ship. So let's take a look at the mythical figures. And you can see here that Noah's dove is depicted just below the stern of, of the great ship. And it's also depicted with the, uh, the olive branch in its beak. So that's pretty cool. It looks like those two stars that I showed you here. One of them is the body of the dove and the other one is the, the branch. Let's see if we can do that again. I always like to try to find these things more than once, especially obscure constellations. Orion's belt to the left points to Sirius. Drop down below Sirius. Look for Canopus. Look for the area about halfway between the two off to the right. And you'll see these two stars here. Here's Columba the dove's body. And here's the olive branch right here. So there are no real bright stars in the constellation Columba. Let 
we do have these two stars that I, I pointed out earlier. Um, the one on the right is the Alpha Star, Alpha Columbi, or FACT, and it is magnitude 2.6, located 261 light years from Earth. And then the other one here is Beta Columbi, or Wazen, third magnitude star, located 87 light years from Earth. There are no notable double stars within Columba, and there are no notable deep sky objects. So this is one of those times where I pull out my star chart and do some, do some serious searching. I do want to point out an interesting star within Columba, and that is Mu Columbi. So let's, let's go to a dark site first. That's always fun. And wow, okay, from a dark site, we're looking south, and we use Orion's belt to find Sirius. We drop down below Sirius to find Canopus. And for most of us in the northern us, the northern hemisphere, the horizon is about here, where my arrow is going back and forth. So it looks like, I mean, Canopus never rises for us. But you still can get to these two stars here just barely. So Columba may be visible from some northern latitudes, although it will be right on the horizon. And even here from Mexico City, it doesn't rise very high. So these two stars here, here's the Alpha Star, um, which is the part of the Olive Branch fact. And here is Wazen or Beta Columbi, or part of the body of the Dove. So let me show you the star Mu Columbi. And it's a fifth magnitude um, star here. It's not a variable star and it's not a double star. So what's interesting about it? Uh, the interesting thing about it is, is its proper motion. It does have a a higher than usual proper motion of, of about 30 milli arc seconds per year. And that sounds real technical, but all it means is that this particular star here over the course of centuries will actually drift. It'll actually move against the background stars. I mean, that's pretty cool. So it means that it's actually, I mean, all the stars that we see in the night sky are moving, but not noticeably over centuries or even over millennia, but Mu Columbi is different. Um, it is, it's got a higher proper motion and it is known as a runaway star. And there's another one, I think it's in, I, I think it's in Aquila that's, that it's um, moving away from. It's, it's as if those two stars were part of a binary system at one point and they, they interacted gravitationally and they shot away from each other. So Mu Columbi is also known as a runaway star. It's also one of the only O-class stars that is visible to the unaided eye. It's just, just at the threshold of visibility by the unaided eye. It's fifth magnitude. Most O-class stars are very, very faint. So this, this one, even though it won't be that interesting through a telescope, um, it's got some interesting properties. So it's one of those you can observe and just uh, read about and enjoy the view. So let's use Stellarium as a star chart. I don't have any, any double stars or deep sky objects listed on my chart here. So I'm going to use Stellarium as a star chart. So let's turn on our boundaries and our constellation name. Let's zoom in a little bit and treat Stellarium as a star chart. Let's go to our viewing options window and turn on deep sky object labels. Let's move this out of the way a little bit. You can see one's already appeared here, um, a globular cluster NGC 1851. Let's, let's get a little bit more detail here. See, a couple galaxies have appeared. Hmm. 
a little bit more detail. All right, that's good for now. So I, I don't overdo it, otherwise the chart just gets too too messy. So we've got we've got a globular cluster now that we can search for NGC eighteen fifty one. And it looks like Stellarium does have an image of it in its database, which is always nice. So let's look at NGC 1851 through an eyepiece, a 13 millimeter Nagler. This is a magnitude 7.2 globular cluster located 3,000, I'm sorry, 39,000 light years from Earth. And as I've gone over before, Globular clusters tend to be in the tens of thousands of light years from Earth. So this one is right about 40,000. So it's right in the realm of globular clusters. Let's try a different eyepiece. Let's see. Going with a low power uh, 24 millimeter eyepiece. Um, you don't get as close of a view, but you, you'll probably get a little bit of a clearer view, especially at at a magnitude 7. Okay. We had a couple of galaxies we wanted to go for here. How about either one of these? Let's pick the top one first. NGC 1808 um, is a 10th magnitude galaxy um, located 40 million light years from Earth. So obviously outside of our own galaxy. And through a finder scope or a telrad, it looks like it'll appear as a nice little smudge. And even through a low power eyepiece, this is a nice one. Put a little bit more power on it. Let's go with a 13 millimeter. That is a nice one. Wow. NGC 1808. I got to make a note of that in the constellation Columba the Dove. Okay, so we return to our star chart view. I did have another galaxy here, NGC 1792. Sometimes it's the things that you just find serendipitously on a star chart uh, that turn out to be some of your favorites. So here's the view of the region through the finder. You can actually see NGC 1808 within the same field of view. And we pop in a 13 millimeter eyepiece and we're treated to a really nice grand design spiral. This is a magnitude 10 uh, galaxy located about 50 million light years away. And a really nice little surprise. So let's return Stellarium to planetarium mode. Let's turn off our labels and markers and our constellation names. And now we've returned to planetarium mode. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, tour of Columba or Noah's Dove. Good night and good seeing.